Good morning, North Central Washington. Good morning, Wenatchee Valley. It is Thursday, the fourth day of January 2017, and live here from Studio 4 in downtown Wenatchee, you're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. I am Dan Koontz, your host, and a good Thursday to you. Thanks for starting your day with us. The NCW Life Channel way. <clears throat> I suppose we have a way. If we don't have a way, we'll find one. Uh, as you notice, to my immediate left, News Director Steve Hare, not in the building today. He was getting better and getting better, and then, well, he's not feeling good again. So, Steve's taking the day off to rest up and get better. The, the crud's kind of going around, not just in our building, but kind of everywhere. There's, there's a flu outbreak all over the United States. Uh, a lot of schools are going through it. So, there's just, just, it's that time of the year when, uh, you know, people get heavy colds and flus and aches and pains and sore throats and that kind of stuff. I'm feeling great. Uh, but Steve isn't, so I'll be handling the news today. And my guest in the second half of the program, Chelan County Sheriff Brian Burnett. We'll be dropping by. We'll talk all things law enforcement in Chelan County with Sheriff Burnett. He'll be joining me in the second half of the show. We've got sports. The Wenatchee Wilds three-game road trip got off to a rough start last night against the Smoke Eaters. We'll have highlights from up in trail. We have the obscure holiday. We have today in history. We have birthdays. And we have a weather forecast, plus your past reports all coming up here on this Thursday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley live here from Studio 5. So, if you're ready to go around the valley like we always are to start your day, let's do it with our high-definition cameras, courtesy of LocalTel's SkyFi high-speed wireless internet. And we always begin, of course, with the valley proper, our affectionately labeled cross cam. And the first thing you'll notice if you get up today is that it's a little bit cloudier than it was yesterday at this time. We had a beautiful day yesterday, lots of sunshine. Didn't quite get up to that 32 degree mark, but we'll take the sunshine any day of the week. I hope you had a chance to uh, enjoy it because <laughs> unfortunately we're done with the sun for a while. In fact, uh, we could even get a little bit of snow tonight, Friday. And Friday night, a wintry mix of precipitation is heading our way. Forecast details coming up. Good morning, Wenatchee Valley proper. Great way to start our day with those kinds of spectacular views. You don't have to build a house with a view when you got this show every morning. Camera number two takes us to number one canyon. Good morning, East Wenatchee. The East Wenatchee bench in plain sight. Again, we're still a good half hour from sunrise, so the, uh, the, the cameras are designed to let in as much light as possible, so it's not quite that bright out. It's just trying to say, give me light so I can show folks how pretty our area is. And to the lower left of your, your uh, screen there, that that street that you see is 5th Street on the campus of Wenatchee Valley College to give you an idea of so you can situate yourself on a cloudy and kind of foggy Thursday morning. Camera number three is, I believe that's Union Valley. Somewhere down there is Lake Chelan. I guarantee you, it didn't go anywhere. That's Lake Chelan down there. You can see the butte across the west. About the only thing you can see, as a matter of fact, is the butte, the beautiful Union Valley area. Uh, so the lower left of your screen would be the town of Chelan, if you could actually see it. So there is a Chelan in the Chelan Valley on this Thursday morning. And finally, our fourth camera will take us to, I don't know. Oh, that's Nanapoc. That's Nanapoc Ridge. It's, it's strange because I can actually see it. Nanapoc Ridge, good morning to the folks up in the Lake Wenatchee and Plain area. It's good to have you on board. Nanapoc Ridge, what a beautiful view. And I'm guessing that the guys who have to maintain our SkyFi network, and they're really good, they're really good professionals, uh, they kind of like to go up and take care of things at tower sites this time of the year, because it means they get to hop on a cat or a snowmobile and cruise on up and have some fun while they're doing their job at the same time. Maybe I'm in the wrong business. Good morning, the Lake Wenatchee area. It's good to have you here on this Thursday morning. It is four minutes after the hour on the fourth day of January, and let's do the weather forecast from the National Weather Service. The first thing you're going to notice, the afternoon high and the overnight low, the same thing, 29 degrees. Uh, we're going right back to what we had for a few days in the early part of the week, just kind of cloudy, high of 29, no real precipitation in the forecast, maybe a slight chance of snow late this afternoon. Now, that chance of snow increases tonight. There's a 30% chance of snow today. It goes up to, uh, I'm sorry, a 20% chance of snow today, 30% chance of snow tonight. But again, uh, with the clouds and this time of the year, in the early, still in the early part of winters and the long days, the high, afternoon high and the overnight low doesn't really do much of anything. We're, we really are going to go through a period of a slight chance of rain, snow, and freezing rain, all possible, really, right through the weekend, beginning today. Nothing crazy. We're not going to get a bunch of snow or a bunch of rain or a bunch of freezing rain. Just a slight chance of a little bit of everything today 
in tonight. Maybe some sleet. Again, a 30% a chance of sleet tonight, so don't bet on it. Now, the chance of precipitation on Friday goes up to 50%, and we could get a little bit of everything on Friday. We have a chance of rain, freezing rain, sleet, and snow. It's all out there. So hedge your bets and a high tomorrow of 32 degrees. Friday night, overnight low, 29. Again, very little temperature variation. And on Friday night, again, about a 50% chance of some freezing rain, some rain, some snow, some sleet. It's all possible. Saturday, we calm down and warm up. Saturday, we're looking at a high of 37 degrees, 20% chance of snow Saturday. And if we get any snow at all, it would be Saturday morning. That's going to be the warmest day we're going to see quite some time on Saturday. And then things calm down. You see the snowflakes uh, and, and the, the raindrops on the graphic there. It's just, it's a 20 to 30% chance of something coming out of the sky Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday into Monday. And that's for the Wenatchee Valley, the mountain passes. That's going to be another story altogether. Uh, they're going to get quite a bit of snow uh, for this weekend. In fact, there is for the mountain passes a winter weather advisory that begins at 6 o'clock tonight and goes until 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. To the passes we go. And right now, you got no problems at all. No advisories, no restrictions. That's I-90 you're looking at. It's a live shot of I-90, <coughs> excuse me, from just a couple of minutes ago. No advisories, no restrictions on Snoqualmie Pass. Roadway is bare and dry. Some ice in places, a little gusty. That's about it. That's Stevens you're looking at. No advisories, no restrictions. Roadway is frost and ice in places. Outside of that, you're fine. And blew it. No advisories, no restrictions. Some frost and ice in places. No fog, clear skies up above. Now the forecast for the mountain passes. Nothing really today. Half an inch of snow may be here, may be there today. Tonight is when that winter weather advisory kicks in at 6 o'clock tonight for the mountain passes. They're expecting one to three inches of snow possible in the Cascades tonight, but it could mix with some ice, some freezing rain and some ice. It is possible tonight, but most of the precipitation they think will come down in the, in the form of snow. Again, one to three inches possible. Uh, tonight and then on Friday things get a little hairier about three inches of snow Friday and then three to seven inches of snow expected in the Cascades Friday night an additional couple of inches on Saturday so the the highest snow accumulation Friday afternoon into Friday night upwards of say seven eight nine inches of snow total coming down in the Cascades and again for the Cascades the National Weather Service has issued a winter weather advisory it begins at six o'clock tonight and is due to expire at 4 o'clock tomorrow. So if you need to drive over the mountain passes today, your chance to go is really now, but for the most part, it'll be fine for the vast majority of the day today. It's Friday afternoon to Friday night when things can get dicey in the Cascades. Just about eight minutes after the hour, going to take a quick break. When we come back, I'll be handling your Thursday morning news. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley live here from Studio 7 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. Hi, I'm Blair from Works, your workout prescription. Have you ever started an exercise program and struggled to keep it going? So what if I told you that with this MyZone device, I could increase your chances of self-motivated exercise adherence by over 200%. Combine that with an exercise prescription specifically for your level of readiness, we'll increase it even more. And that's our new member success system. It's $99, it's exclusively at Works. It includes your MyZone belt. Works, yourworkoutrx.com. And now it's time for your local news update with Steve Hare. And once again, I'm Dan Coon. Steve Hare is off today. Hopefully, if he feels better, he'll be back on this Friday edition of this program. In the meantime, here is your Thursday morning news on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. A Christmas Day fire destroyed a vacant home in the Whispering Ridge area, and that's leading investigators. They're still looking for leads. Chelan County Fire Marshal Bob Plum explains what happened. Uh, parcel. Uh has been moving for uh, a number of years in the landslide, and uh, the house had shifted probably two feet, three feet uh, over time, and uh, it was out of kilter. Uh, walls were cracking, the roof was separating, and a lot of the interior fixtures had been uh, removed, is what I was told. But it hadn't been lived in for a couple years. The uh, fire is, you know, I, I 
hate to use the word suspicious, but um, there was no power to the building, and uh, there was no natural cause for the fire. So um, it, it, it was uh, either accidental or intentional. Uh, but I don't have any suspects uh, at this point in time. I'm still looking for more information. Anybody that might have seen someone there uh, between the hours of oh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon and, and when the fire was reported around 7.50. It, it burnt to the ground. Um, there's a concrete foundation left and, and uh, with some debris in the bottom of it. So there's, there's not much left. With little information on the cause and no suspects, Plum says the investigation is essentially at a standstill, but he will continue to work with the Chelan County Sheriff's Office. Well, there's a large crack in the hillside above Union Gap, I-82, just south of Yakima, and officials are concerned Eric Granstrom filed this report. The fissure along Rattlesnake Ridge near Union Gap and possible landslide caused officials to urge 50 nearby residents to evacuate last week. According to reports, the crack appeared along the ridge line in October, stretching north from an active rock quarry at the base of the ridge. Yakima County Emergency Management officials said Tuesday they can't definitively predict the scope of an expected landslide and that, quote, the geologic experts that have been monitoring the slide believe that since the slide is slow moving and on a gentle slope, the landslide event will be small in nature and hopefully stabilize itself, unquote. This drone footage was taken by Stephen Mack. According to an article in the Yakima Herald, Columbia Asphalt and Gravel, whose quarry is at one end of the crack, plans to offer remaining residents hotel rooms if they want to evacuate. Officials say the hillside above the quarry is moving an average of 1.4 feet per week. Rattlesnake Ridge forms the eastern side of a gap in ridges that separate the upper and lower Yakima Valleys. Lying in that gap, Thorpe Road, Highway 97, a Burlington Northern Rail Line, I-82, and the Yakima River. With NCW Life Channel News, I'm Eric Grandstrom. Real-life country doctor Ann Diamond, who declared early in November that she will run against State Representative Carrie Kandata for the 12th District House seat, so far has raised more money than Kandata. According to the Public Disclosure Commission, Diamond has raised $27,335 for her campaign. Kandata has raised $17,150. Dr. Diamond is the founder of the Country Clinic in Winthrop, said she'll run as an independent on a platform involving affordable and universal health care, local economic development and jobs, and preserving public lands. The 12th District includes parts of Okanagan and Grant Counties, plus all of Chelan and Douglas counties. Well, the number of people finding work in the valley continues to grow, while the number of people out of work continues to shrink to near historic levels. Don Messick is the labor economist for our area, and he dropped by our studios yesterday to pass along the good news. The unemployment rate this November is 4.6 percent. It was 5.9 percent in November 2016, so that's a one and three tenths percentage point drop. That's statistically significant and I think probably even more important is the fact that our unemployment rate here in the two county area has been dropping now for 13 consecutive months all the way back to November 2016 so between November's of 15 and 16 so when you have a 13 consecutive month year-over-year -year decline in the local unemployment rate that says something. Messick says most of the growth in jobs can be attributed to the fact that more people are moving to the valley. Primarily, more people are in the labor force. We have a 2.1% growth in the labor force, Dan. We have a 3.5% growth in the resident employment. That ties into what we discussed earlier. There are about 2,062 more residents in the Wenatchee MSA's labor force in November 17 than in November 16. Uh, what's really been pushing the rate down, however, more than the growth in the labor force, is the decline in the number of unemployed. The number of unemployed was uh, 3,705 residents in November 16, 2,972 residents in November of 17. So basically, November 16 was 3,705, declined to 2,972. What does that mean? 733 fewer residents uh, in, that are unemployed a 19.8% drop in the number of residents. So you could say 20%, 20%. Um, fewer residents are out of work. However, Messick added that for how long the numbers remain good is really anybody's guess. 
we're at a historic low period. It's definitely encouraging, and like I say, we've had 13 consecutive months of year-over-year -year declines in the monthly unemployment rate in the Wenatchee MSA. When will it go up? That's the question, and uh, I, I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I think at this point, we just have to, to say we've seen a 13-month trend. If anyone were to ask me, what about December? Well, I would say with 13 consecutive months and the one and three tenths percentage point spread between Novembers of 16 and 17, is it likely the rate will continue to drop in December, between the Decembers of 16 and 17? I would say so, but how long? I honestly don't know. The biggest decline in jobs remains the manufacturing sector since the mothballing of Bonacci's Alcoa Works just about two years ago to the very day. And that is news at 16 minutes after the hour. Reminder, we'd love to hear from you, our viewers, or any number of ways to do it. You can go to our Facebook page, and be sure to like us, by the way. Uh, go to our Facebook page, you can private message us. We'd love to hear from you. You can pick up the telephone and call us during regular business hours, 888-2020. You can go to our website at ncwlife.com. And by the way, quick heads up, if you decide to spend some time on our website today, you're going to be there for a while. It's a really good website. We're very proud of it. And there's a lot of information, a lot of good stuff there on our website, ncwlife.com. And you can just click on the Contact Us icon, and by golly, we'll get that as well. We'd love to hear from you, our viewers here at the NCW Life channel. 16 minutes after they are going to take a, just a very quick one minute break when we come back. Sports, the obscure holiday today in history, birthdays, everyone is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. And a reminder, my guest in the second half of the program, Chelan County Sheriff Brian Burnett. So I will be on my best behavior. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom with NCW Life Sports. I'm NCW Life News Director Steve Hare. Catch us on Local Tell Channel 12. You can watch us on Charter Channel 19 or stream us live on ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Where we cover the local high schools, the Wenatchee Wild, and the pro teams out of Seattle. On Saturday, we have a 90% chance of rain. Catch it all right here on the NCW Life Channel. My name is Robert Duff, current and previous occupation as architect, engineer, and lawyer. Grew up here in Washington, born in Moses Lake. When I first came to CVCH, I uh, was looking for a place to get some dental work done. I was really impressed with the people at the counter. I mean, they were just on top of it. It only took her like 15 minutes to do the job. I didn't feel anything. The technology is so great, you don't even realize you're at the dentist. These people are so professional. I would have any one of these people at my home for dinner. These people are family. We're back at 18 minutes after the hour, 24 degrees outside of our studios under partly to mostly cloudy skies. Fairly cloudy skies most of the day today, a high of only 29 degrees. Slight chances, some light snow mixed with freezing rain late this afternoon and spilling into the evening hours. All right, let's do sports. The Wenatchee Wild began their three-game road series up north in trail against the Smoke Eaters, and their four-game winning streak came to a halt. A.J. Vanderbeck tied the game with a goal in the second, but Wenatchee couldn't counter a trail goal in the third, and they lost. The final was 2-1. to one. Our checker had the call to the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network. We uh, Please pardon us for the audio in the first goal, but it does get better. Here are your highlights. Chalatic comes in as well, but they can't clear. Martin with a shot, save and rebound, score! The shot came from the left, the left point, and the stop was made. But the backhander, Bonnie Giridassi, was enough to tuck it in underneath Park. behind Park. And the Wild do everything right, right stop except that stop that shot. Demon drifts, looks for a lane. Instead, he'll fire it to Vanderbeck. Vanderbeck in, shoots, he scores! What a shot by Vanderbeck as he ripped that one high on the glove side. Power play goal for Wenatchee, and we are even up at a goal apiece. Slava Demon will get the first assist on it. But Vanderbeck continues his hot streak. Four games in a row with a goal, and nine games in a row with a point. Power play tally for Vanderbeck. 5.55, time of the tally. And then moved over to the near corner, held in though. Moved across right side, shot, score. Jones from the right circle, a power play goal. His drop pass for Hessler. Now to Stratton, cross corner dump, six seconds left. We're gonna run out of time. The Wild won't get a chance to get a shot on net. And Trail is gonna hang on to win it. 
So there you go. When Anchi continues their road trip with a game tomorrow at Salmon Arm and then a rematch with Penticton on Saturday. And Wild fans will be eager to see if last Saturday's bad blood that erupted at the end of Wenatchee's 3-1 victory will spill over into the weekend. All right, to the Les Schwab Prep scoreboard. From last night in high school basketball, Quinn Stamps led all scores with 19 points and 11 rebounds. Chelan edged Cascade 56-54. In girls play, Andy had no trouble with Cascade Christian Academy. They won 51-9. And in Big Nine Wrestling, Eastmont, a tough luck loser to Davis, 39-34. Here's your prep calendar for today. In girls bowling, Wenatchee is on the road at Eisenhower. Eastmont is at Moses Lake. Both of those matches start at 3. In swimming and diving, the Eastmont boys will host Davis at 4 o'clock at the Aquatic Center in East Wenatchee in a Caribou Trail League double duel. Cashmere will host OMAC, Cascade, and Chelan beginning at 6. In prep basketball play tonight, Antiat is at Moses Lake Christian. Waterville Mansfield will host Orville, and Soap Lake is at Mansfield, uh, Manson, I should say. All of those are doubleheaders with the girls starting at 6 and the boys at 7.30. Hey, it's Thursday. That means hockey night here. On the NCW Live channel, it starts at 7 with Call to the Wild and then Clark East Corner. And then we'll be showing the Wilds game against Penticton from last Friday at the Town Toyota Center. That begins at about 7.15. And finally, speaking of the Wild, congratulations to Josh Arnold. He's committed to play Division I hockey at Northern Michigan University in the fall of next year. Arnold becomes the 11th Wenatchee Wild player to make a Division I commitment this season. It's a talented team, entertaining as all get out as well, I might add. 21 minutes after the hour on this fourth day of January 2017. You ready for the obscure holiday of the day today? It's one of my favorites. All of my obscure holidays seem to be food or drink related. You notice that? Uh, today, January 4th, is National Spaghetti Day. On top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese. I lost my poor meatball when somebody sneezed. Uh, spaghetti, very, very popular dish. How many people just plain don't like spaghetti? I only know two, and I work with both of them. Uh, nobody knows why January 4th is National Spaghetti Day. Spaghetti is one of the classic comfort foods. Of course, spaghetti came over from the Italians during the 18th and 19th century. Thomas Jefferson pop popularized macaroni in the U.S., but not spaghetti. In fact, it's basically the Italian immigrants brought spaghetti with them. Spaghetti is an Italian word, which, which means twine. Uh, but the Americans have done two really good things to spaghetti to add our own little spice to it. We are responsible, Americans are, <clears throat> for tomato sauce, and Americans were the ones who decided to put meatballs on spaghetti. That was, that was our little innovation. Good for us. Uh, the average American eats about 15 and a half pounds of pasta a year, but we got nothing on the Italians. The average Italian eats 55 pounds of pasta a year, and almost two million tons of pasta is manufactured each and every year just here in the United States. National Spaghetti Day. Mm. With homemade sauce, by the way. You gotta, you gotta, the gravy's got to be homemade. It has to be. 23 minutes after the hour, January 4th, and we got today in history. Uh, and it's time to say welcome to another State of the Union. Today, Utah does the honors. It was on this date 122 years ago today. The beef, Beehive State, Utah, joined the Union January 4th. 1896 as the 45th state in the Union. Approximately 62% of Utah residents are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS, the Mormons. Utah is the only state with a majority population belonging to just a single church. More fun facts about Utah. Utah is the only state where every county in the state has at least some national forest land. Pretty interesting. Utah has 26 official symbols, including the state song, Utah, This is the Place. The old state song was Utah, We Love Thee. The new straight state song, Utah, This is the Place, replaced the old one in 1996 when Utah celebrated their centennial. And they did it for a very good reason, because the old state song, Utah, We Love Thee, a bunch of people got together and said, that song isn't very good. We can do better than that. And so they, they commissioned an original song called Utah, this is the place, and it's a heck of a lot better song than Utah, We Love Thee. If you don't believe me, just go to YouTube and listen, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Happy birthday to Utah, 122 years old today. Uh, 70 years ago today, the Beatles, without John Lennon, recorded the album version of the song, Let It Be. It would be their last recording session 
as a group. John had already left the group. He was on vacation in Denmark with Yoko Ono. They needed to finish up some tracks so they could get their final album out. Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, and George Harrison convened at Abbey Road Studios, finished up the album version of the song, Let It Be. They walked out the door that day, and that was it. The last recording session of the Beatles held on this date. 1970, 48 years ago today. And the tallest building in the world opened, that's a tall building, opened on this date eight years ago in Dubai, the Burj Kafala. It is the tallest building in the world. It's 163 floors high. Not only is it the tallest building in the world, it is the tallest structure in the world. Now, there were structures that were actually taller than the tallest buildings. They were television and radio transmitters who would go way up there, most of them located out in the middle of nowhere so they could spread their, uh, their radio frequency as far as possible. But when this building opened eight years ago, it became not only the tallest building in the world, but the tallest structure in the world, and it still is. I wonder what the engineering feat is like flushing a toilet 163 floors above the, <laughs> above the street level. Somebody explain that one to me. Uh, and that is today in history at 26 minutes after the hour. Birthdays, I got, uh, I got four of them for you today, including the most influential scientist of all time, unquestionably, Sir Isaac Newton. There he is. He was born in this date in 1643. He was actually born Christmas Day, 1642, but that was the old calendar with the calendar that we use now that makes his birthday today, January 4th, 1643. Through 1643. Passed away at the age of 84 in 1727. That's living a long time back in those days. Without question, he's the most influential scientist of all time. The laws of motion and gravity, he gets, he gets credit for that. Unfortunately, if I have one beef about Sir Isaac Newton is this. He invented calculus. Outside of that, he's a great guy. Isaac Newton, born in the state in 1643. NFL Hall of Famer Don Shula is 88 years old today. There's Don for 33 years. He was a head coach of the National Football League. In 33 years as a head coach, he had two losing seasons. That's a remarkable achievement. Of course, he coached in six Super Bowls, won two of them, both with the Miami Dolphins, and his 347 wins as a head coach is by far the most of all time. The great Don Shula is 88 years old today. Our next birthday, we're going to take you back to November 22nd, 1963. Uh, the limousine, you see Clint Hill on your screen there, uh, the limousine through Dallas, Texas. The driver was Secret Service Agent William Greer. On the front passenger seat was Secret Service Agent Roy Kellerman. In the jump seats, of course, were Governor and Mrs. John Connolly. And in the back seat, President Kennedy and his wife, Jacqueline. And of course, Clint Hill was the Secret Service Agent who reacted to the shots, jumped on the back of the limousine, and protected um, what was left of the President on the way to Parkland Hospital. Clint Hill is the last surviving person who was in the presidential limousine that made it to Parkland Hospital that dark Friday in November of 1963. In a 1975 interview with Mike Wallace, Clint Hill said, under tears, he cried, I watched this on YouTube yesterday, he said, if I got into the car one second earlier, I would have been able to take the bullet that took the life of the president. He said he's never gotten over that. Clint Hill, Secret Service agent, is 87 years old today. And my favorite historic author, I read, I've read everything she's ever written three times, I think. I'm talking about Doris Kearns Goodwin. Doris Kearns Goodwin there. She is, she's 75 years old today. Uh, Lyndon Johnson and the American Dream was her first book. It's a fantastic book. No Ordinary Time, which is about Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt in the White House years during World War II. Um, every Four Years, a presidential campaign coverage memoir. Team of Rivals, of course. The great book and her latest book, which just came out a couple of years ago, The Bully Pulpit, Doris Kearns Goodwin, one of America's finest historians and authors, celebrates her birthday today. It is 29 minutes after the hour. Everyone's entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. His topic today, it's these kids. It's these kids today. Mike will talk about that in a couple of minutes. And then Brian Burnett, the Chelan County Sheriff, will be joining me for the second half of the show. It's going to be a great conversation. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Wake Up Anansi Valley live here from Studio 9 to downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. Alone, it can be hard to reach our dreams. It can feel like you aren't welcome anywhere. When no one's there to clap, Taking on the world by yourself. 
But when we come together, when we lend a helping hand, when we set the stage, when you support causes you care about in your community, lives are changed. You make a difference in someone's life when you give. Imagine the impact if everyone in our community gave 10%. 10% makes a difference. In our experience, some people are just cut out for charter college and for success in a new career. These charter types are hard workers. Charter types go above and beyond. And charter types are responsible. If you're ready to get to work making a better future for yourself, you're just our type. Charter College. We work to get you to work. Skillsource specializes in assessing and guiding youth, adults, and laid-off workers who want to improve their skills. Here you can attend in-depth workshops to assess skills and interests, make career plans, and learn computer basics. Learning centers provide eligible youth and adults individualized computer-assisted basic education. Vocational training is arranged with approved providers like community colleges or on the job with businesses. Don't wait any longer. Let's get working on the future you've been dreaming about. Hi, I'm Cordell Schroeder, owner of East Wenatchee Mobile Storage. If you're thinking about making a move anytime soon, check out the East Wenatchee Mini Storage brand new mobile storage service. They drop it off at your location, you pack it, and they pick it up and store it in their protected warehouse at East Wenatchee for as long as you need. When you're ready, they'll drop it off at your new home or office. East Wenatchee Mini Storage is excited to offer this brand new service to our region. Call 509-884-8643 or find us on the web at ewministorage.com. Bay Equity Home Loans in Wenatchee, serving all of North Central Washington. We make it our priority to learn all about your financial needs. Whether you're buying your first home, refinancing, or want a reverse mortgage, our mortgage professionals are ready to guide you through the loan process. We have a wide variety of loan products to fit your family's needs. Call Bay Equity Home Loans of Wenatchee today for your pre-approval. 509-888-0466. Mike, Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody's entitled to my opinion. You know, I just read a friend's Facebook post asking if Cliff Notes were still a thing because he mentioned them to a younger person who didn't know what, what, what the person was talking about. Now, this made me think about how much other stuff I have mentioned to millennials that to their loss they've never heard of. For example, Sophia Loren. Oh, God. Aesop's Fables, The Leaning Tower of Pizza, believe it or not, Michelangelo's Statue, The Moses, David, and others, Far Fawcett, Film the Noir, and of course, the two best car chase movies ever made, Bullet and the French Connection. Now, it reminds me of when my kids were younger and when I wanted to share a classic movie with them and they'd moan, oh no, Dad, this is black and white, we don't want to watch this. Now, it's painful thinking about all the stuff that our younger generation has missed out on. It's painful. Kids these days. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills. A chill is in the air, and it's a perfect time for some old fashioned comfort food like our amazing Eggs Benedict, chicken fried steak, French dips, soups made from scratch, or fruit pies fresh from the oven. The crowds might be gone, but we're still here for you folks. So bring an appetite and a friend to Blueberry Hills in Manson, where you pick, you sit, you eat, and you visit. Open Wednesday through Sunday from 8 to 3, wildaboutberries.com. If you're stuck trying to find the perfect beer for you, look no further than Badger Mountain Brewing. We specialize in creating tantalizing craft beers that will soothe any picky taste buds and will satisfy your cravings. Check out everything from our amazing honey blonde that will appease even the most finicky taster or a delicious frothy stout for dark beer lovers. Experience them all at Badger Mountain Brewing. Life is about memories and lasting impressions. With Boswell's expansive two-story showroom of quality home furnishings, you'll find everything you need to create a home to remember. 
Need assistance? From fabric options and complimentary design service to complete home makeovers, Glenn, Buffy, and Teresa are there to guide you. Come into Boswell's and find inspiration and comfort for every room in your home. Boswell's on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. Hi, this is Carl. And Kathy from East Wenatchee Grocery Outlet. We are excited to be a part of this wonderful community and look forward to meeting you at East Wenatchee Grocery Outlet. Our store is filled with name brand products at bargain prices at 40 to 60% savings. We have a large selection of natural, organic, and specialty foods. Stop by and meet Carl, the wine guy, on Wednesday. East Wenatchee Grocery Outlet, where you can win what you save. Stop by soon. And welcome back to this Thursday edition of Wake Up on Anchee Valley. I am Dan Coots, and my guest today just began his seventh year as the Chief Law Enforcement Officer for Chelan County, and this is the first time I've had a chance to interview on this program, Chelan County Sheriff Brian Burnett. Welcome to the program. Okay, now you said earlier that you didn't like the calculus, <laughs> so it's actually the beginning of eight. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, you're right. So, I, I apologize. So, my my bad. Yeah. So this interview has gone off to a rousing start. <laughs> well, let's go. Let's go back ten years. Twenty ten is when uh, you were elected mm -hmm. um, to your first term. Uh, you defeated the incumbent Mike Harum in a landslide, seventy five percent of the vote, something like that. Uh, the twenty fourteen election cycle was easy for you. Nobody ran against you. You just kind of cruised into your second term. Now it's election cycle again. Brian, it's twenty eighteen. Uh, you're up for re-election. Are you? Uh, you gonna run again? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I just filed last week with the Public um, Disclosure Commission to, to, you know, let them know my intentions and and go forth. As, you know, Dan, I'd, I've got a lot of work that I'd love to do uh, for our area through the the sheriff's office and and with our staff. You know, it's not just me there. There's a lot of other people that make the wheels turn and do a great job. And so, yeah, I've uh, I've got uh, a few more years left in me by 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 far. I'd I'd love to do at least two more terms. Uh, and you're still young. I mean, you're you're pretty young when you were elected. Re you? Yeah, it's yeah. all relative, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But it, you were forthright you, when you came right out and took the job um, in uh, after after your election victory. Uh, you, first of all, you found out you had a two hundred thousand dollar hole in your budget that seemed to come out of nowhere. That's a Talk about getting stuck right behind the eight ball, right out of the box. Right, and to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know that I'd ever been to a county commissioner's meeting, uh, and even attended one and, and, and watched one. Let alone then my first one was, oh by the way, your 2010 budget, which you know I was just coming in and they were closing, going to be responsible for the 2011 budget, which was created by a different administration. That we were, I think it was around 150 uh, between 150 and 200 thousand dollars, and and so that wasn't uh, a good way to start your first commissioner's meeting, but what we had to do is it forced us to go in and, and dissect and really um, over the next couple years really break apart and see where is the money going and are there areas that we can minimize some um, funding and, and divert some funding into other critical areas and that's what we've done over the last seven years. Well here we are now 2018 you're, you're, you're down the road January financially um, the, the budget process is done you have your budget for this year financially how's the sheriff's department doing? You know I think we're doing really good and, and the, the message the commissioners are giving us this year um, um, moving towards 2019 is with the lo loss of the old station uh, with the annexation into the city of Wenatchee there's a there's a difference in revenue there by 1.8 somewhere in the 2 million we had the hold of mine restoration project the Rio Tento which brought in a lot of sales tax revenue and so those are gone now and so th there's there's a change uh, and a hole there so depending on what our economy does except the economy is strong and so we're hoping that we'll see a little bit of a rebound otherwise they'll have to make some adjustments but the commissioners have done a good job in keeping our reserve fund balance up so you know when you have those changes you don't have to go in and make some drastic changes to each person's budget but uh, you know we hold department head meetings each and every month and uh, they go over the financials uh, you know what are the forecast are we are we hitting our marks and, and how that affects each department and of course the number one eater of budgets is personnel people want to get paid to do their jobs uh, personnel doing okay are you shorthanded in some departments or is all your departments that are under your direct supervision no well we're staffed? doing good and, and if most people don't know 85 percent of uh, our budget is is roughly salaries and benefits that's just the fact and around those numbers and so 15 percent is operating cost um, 
um, so services, uh, equipment and training are the big piece that we try to maintain and, and main, not just stable, but you know, trying to, for, to try to predict what is the best form of practice um, that we in policy that we can do in the future to reduce liability. And, and also, we want to we want to um, reach out to and become uh, an agency that people want to work at because then you can pick and we have people coming to us and then the level of service that comes in from that because the people that you hire is going to be outstanding. Well, I'll let you sell your product. Is being a Chelan County Sheriff's Deputy a desirable job? Are people knocking on your door? I want to come to work for you, Brian? It, it is. And I think what we find here in North Central Washington is that they desire to live in this area. There, there's a lot of things that attract you to here. The, the lifestyle, uh, raising a family, recreation, um, the, even the Four Seasons, even though when we step outside these doors here it's cold mm -hmm. but uh, they really do and so the now how do you set yourself apart from the other agencies that are also here and so one is you know um, competitive salaries and benefits that's a big piece of it but it goes much deeper than that Dan I really believe it's a culture and also what do you offer for your training and equipment people want to know that they are provided the, the best and most greatest leading forward into the future to to keep them safe on their job because we live in an unstable environment around us. I mean, look at the national news and a, a lot of law enforcement uh, is being targeted by you know groups and individuals that, that aren't real friendly. And Steve, even though Steve Herr, our news director, isn't here, he sent me a text. <laughs> this is pretty funny, right before we Good got morning, on there. Good morning, Steve. Uh, hi, Steve, yeah. how are you? Ask the sheriff about the emergency management center. So Sheriff Burnett, talk about the Emergency Management Center. Okay, as we formally refer to as the EOC, um, it's something that we went in and put in a capital expense, uh, you know, to get some grant money uh, from the state. And I, bo I believe that the House and the Senate both approve us for a million dollars. Uh, we had received some money from the previous uh, budget cycle at a couple hundred thousand to do the um, engineering and drafting piece of that. And so we could bring in a regional emergency operations center that would house our emergency management staff but also allow us when we have big events like some of these fires that we've experienced here in a three or four county area that we could use that facility our our our, our fire management teams could come in um, and and operate out of that center with uh, technology and, and and a facility that would host that centrally located is a big key to that here it would be in the old station area yeah, it makes it makes perfect sense because we live in an area where a mm -hmm. lot of law enforcement agencies are overlapping with each other and, and your relationships are all good with the state patrol and with Randy Harrison and Steve Crown and and, uh, and Harvey Just all y'all y'all get along pretty good y'all understand your roles right you're, you're, you guys are all cool with each other uh, absolutely I think as, as good as anywhere in the state and uh, so there's a one word that we thought that we would have been had that funding at the at the end of uh, legislation last year going into July and of course there's one word that sl slowed us down and I'll let you say that word Hurst. <laughs> and so Hurst. and so again um, this fall even we kept doing updates and hey where are we at are we going to see this funding come to fruition or are we really going to get it because if not we're going to need an extension on our original funding that 200,000 for our development because we don't want to waste that money if we're not going to get the grant to build and then is there matching funds from the county as well and so here we are in January um, hoping that we will hear something early this year. Um, we, I asked you this off the air, and I'll ask you on the air. Uh, how much does the does, does how much the, the state budget impasse is going on right now? As they go into session, of course, the Washington State Legislature begins session next week. Supposedly a 60-day session. We'll find out. How much uh, does a political deadlock in Olympia affect? your department and your budget at Shillong County? No, it doesn't seem to be really direct. Uh, anytime legislation does any fun, unfunded uh, mandates is going to affect us. Um, some uh, um, indirect ways that would uh, affect us is uh, what's the funding towards the Criminal Justice Training Commission, which does our basic law enforcement academy, and are they able to have enough funding in there to to have staff and, tr and, and, and produce X amount of classes um, if, if they have enough um, product um, agencies wanting to put new persons in to get them trained to get them hired and on the street and they have enough to fund 10 to 12 classes at a time but they're only running six to eight there's a backload right now Dan we just looked this week uh, as we're looking to fill up one deputy position and if that was an entry-level position um, and we submitted their name today uh, the earliest we could get them into a basic law enforcement Academy class would be June 25th 
And then that's six months of training? Yeah, it's about five and a half okay. at the academy. It's equivalent to 720 hours. And then they'll come back and do training. But we have a pre-academy training uh, and then a post-academy. So they're going to do a couple weeks um, outside of the academy. And then when they finish that, then we put them into what we call a field training uh, a period, FTO, that they're going to do another. And it, it's a we call it 12 weeks, but it's about 40 shifts. Mm -hmm. And all of that is coming out of the, your, your budget. And yes. then they are committed mm -hmm. to become... Uh, a, a deputy in the Chelan County Sheriff's Department. That's so the, the biggest off. piece of that is is, is when we have um, turnover and, and and we need to fill vacant positions. Uh, and then right now we have three people out on light duty on medical issues. And, and so then all of a sudden the, the gap becomes in patrol coverage. And then a lot of times we have to go back and backfill those, which is overtime dollars, time one and a half times your regular salary. And that can get a little expensive. So speaking of patrol, you don't strike me as a guy who, who likes to sit behind his desk all day. Do you, do you like to get out and just patrol and just get a feel from what's going on? I would they, just like to get out, Dan. Yeah. Uh, I know you made a comment that, wow, you look like you're ready to go. You do. I, I do love to get out and, and handle a couple calls. I don't like to get bogged down with the, the report writing, the paperwork. I actually have three or four subpoenas uh, um, on my desk right now, which means I could None get of those have my name on which, it, right? No, which okay. means I could get called up to, to testify in court on a case. Sure. And uh, I think two or three of those came from Memorial Weekend. Uh, assisting the drug task force. We were up there, all of our command staff works through that busy weekend. And then we had something else. I was out presenting at a school uh, and safety program in Leavenworth. They were having their state conference and I was just coming back through town. Uh, um, they had a disturbance call come out. I was the closest person. I thought I was going to go and just back our guys and kind of, it's kind of a way to connect. It helps also helps me to, to connect with our people to say, you know, what is it on the street um, that we're not providing you that you need? or what, what things are working and actually seeing our equipment and our new hires, people that I've actually interviewed and hired and, and put through training, uh, actually seeing them work and it's just a connection. It's great to be outside and, and have a connection with uh, the, the community as well. And then I end up with a DUI arrest out of this because guys were busy on another call and, and such and so I end up getting called in for, you know, for court and stuff. So those are things I try not to get done because my, my schedule can get pretty busy at office, different meetings and then uh, this year, uh, um, my role as the WASPIC president, um, a few trips to uh, Lacey and Olympia over the year. But uh, other than that, it's, it's looking like a good year coming up. You mentioned DUIs, Deputy uh, Lee Reisden and Deputy Austin Key. And Austin Key's brand new, brand new to your department. Boy, they had good years, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Um, you know, and, and I know when I first started, there were, there were deputies that had 80, 90, 100 DUIs a year. So, you know, almost double that. Um, there, there was a difference though, Dan. Right now we have what we call 24-hour coverage. And, and, it, and there's a give and take on this, is you have to say, we want to be available to respond at any given minute to any call anywhere in the county. And, and prior to that, when we still worked what we called our 5-8 shifts, and you had set days off, is we had more of a compression. So we didn't have coverage between 4 and 6 in the morning. So mm -hmm. the, four, the guy that got off at 4 o'clock in the morning, he basically, or she would lay on the couch, and this was kind of their terms, was they would basically wait um, because if a call came out between four and five, they were gonna get called back out by dispatch. If a call came out between five and six, your, your morning shift person would get called out. And uh, so there's a difference. So when we went to the 12 hour shifts, the rotating 12s, um, it had to stretch that back out because we had the same staffing or even less after the recession is that um, even though we're available around the clock, you, you pull that out. So during the swing shift from about four to midnight, um, we had more officers available and I was working out in Cashmere and Leavenworth. And so um, if I was coming in at four, we still had day shift hanging over and there was some mid shifts um, in there and then there were some late night shifts. So four to midnight uh, and we had a lot more officers and so there was a lot of more discretion to go out and work traffic and, and be a little more proactive and aggressive and people were getting a lot more DUIs. So I, I don't know that there's less, I just think it's, it's we're busier and uh, technology is great but also creates a lot more work that we have to do. Again, remember I talked about some unfan unfunded mandates mm -hmm. that we get and there's a lot of different ways that uh, we could show you that we have those as well and it keeps us busy. The Chelan County Commissioners recently passed uh, some new marijuana growing ordinances. It's still controversial. It's not over yet. There will certainly be mm -hmm. litigation. 
Does that line at your desk now? Are you out there enforcing these new regulations that the commission passed uh, last fall? You know, fall? It, it really hasn't changed, Dan, as, as if we get information, and a lot of this will, it could be at the street level through our detectives, but most of this will get uh, thrown towards the Columbia River Direct Task Force to have them go investigate. Um, if they have a valid state permit, that's going to be much, much different than if they're working without any type of permit and it's just what we call an illegal grow, illegal, illegal manufacturing, then we would go out through that person just like you were a, a drug dealer on the street. We're going we're gonna to hold you accountable and you're probably going to go to jail. Um, opiates. No. Oh. Opiates. Yeah. Uh, the Chelan County Jail is, is right above your office door. How many people on average on any given day are incarcerated at the Chelan County Jail on drug charges? Oh, Do you have any idea? I don't, um, but I, it, it's, 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 it's high. It's, it is, and when we talk about property kind of crimes and different things, and a theft. lot of that goes back to yeah. theft. Really goes back to drug and alcohol addictions. You know, are you using that? Well, one is it just you know enabling you and, and influence you to make bad decisions, um, but also uh, is it? a way of supporting your habit. And that's generally what we're looking at in, in the drug and the opiate use is maybe someone in a typical, what we call the soccer mom, goes in for some type of surgery. Um, they use it for the pain management and then they become addicted. Um, and then the next thing they know, they can't get the prescription or they start doing prescription fraud and they can get in trouble with the courts there. And then all of a sudden they're going available because they have this craving, this addiction, and then all of a sudden they're at the street level crime uh, using um, street level drugs. And, and that's, that's even worse. And so it, it's a bad source out there. And I know that we just saw some reports that came out and said there were fewer deaths in North Central Washington uh, from mm -hmm. heroin and opiate use. Um, I, I had a problem with that, and so I actually went, went and talked, and, and uh, at the time, Chris Foreman, our sergeant for the drug task force, pulled up some stats and said, it's true, but at the same time, there's a greater amount of use. We believe there's use, and we're seeing a lot more um, heroin and opiate use in our valley here, and a lot of it has to do with supply and demand. How do you, does that change the way your offices or your, your deputies are being trained, uh, the opiate epi epidemic? Is there, is there a certain thing that they have to look for? They just wait till somebody breaks into your house to steal a TV to go buy their drugs? No, not necessarily. I think one of the things that there's some safety precautions for fentanyl. Um, we recently got what is similar to Narcan kits. So would, if there was an exposure, you know, um, to that, that could be a lethal exposure to one of our officers, that they're all carrying those on the cells on the street. And so if you're carrying an Arcan kit, it's not for yourself because by the time you realize you're affected by it, it's going to be too late. Somebody else is going to have to administer it. But that's for the deputy to administer that to another law enforcement officer. But at the same time, we have that available. If we come across a person that's a user on the street and they've had an overdose, um, we could use that before age gets there. Uh, your cohort across the river, uh, your friend of mine, Harvey Jesdall, announced earlier he's not going to run for re-election. He's going to be uh, retiring from the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and pursuing some new opportunities. Talk a little bit about, about Harvey. I know you guys are pretty close. You work together in a lot of different things. Uh, yeah, we do. And, and we've, we're working on some things in the future. I've talked to Under Sheriff Kevin Morris, who I knew was going to be running, and we talked about what that would look like as far as him taking over the helm. Um, but, you know, uh, we've been members of the same uh, um, they had a member for the for the um, SWAT team years ago. Uh, right now, we have separate teams. We've brought those teams together and starting to do some trainings uh, throughout the year, moving towards and and been encouraging their agency to come with ours, which includes uh, you know Wenatchee Police and the Chelan County Sheriff's Office, is to go to some uh, national standards, a larger team. Um, if you get into a large scale event in a tactical response scenario, you need a minimum of 20 team members and we can't produce that between Chelan County Sheriff's Office and Wenatchee Police. So we're moving towards that, bringing our training tactics, making them the, towards the same, and what that looks like if we can actually integrate a team and be the same team. I, I think we'll get there someday. It's, it, there's a few hurdles and speed bumps, um, but uh, we're, we're playing a lot better in the sandbox. The biggest key, I think, is knowing that, you know, our crime, our drug activity here, that cr that is effective towards our quality of life is not, that does not work within the boundaries of the river, county, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and the city boundaries. And so we have to work together as a large group, um, even state and even some federal agencies to say, how do we maintain and, and, and 
create public safety here that's the best place in the state to, to live. And this, this brings up the next question. This is going to sound silly, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Is Shillelagh County safe? Is it safe? Oh, abs oh absolutely. Um, but we can't, you know, I can never guarantee you anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, but it's it definitely, if you look at some of the violent crime statistics, of, we're, we're way down there. Um, uh, if you look at some of the major agencies across the United States. I just saw um, Chicago and Baltimore had some, I think Baltimore just put out uh, their, their uh, um, uh, homicide rate. And I, I want to say it was, it was like 56 and 100,000 people. Well, in Chelan County, we might have two or three homicides a year on average. You know, maybe one year we have four or five and one year we have zero or one. And so when you did those numbers, it, man, it was drastically different than 56 per 100,000. So if you take this entire valley of Wenatchee here and we might give us 100,000 people or both counties combined and we'd be lucky to have five or six homicides a year. So what is that, at least 10 yeah. times lower? Yeah. So there's a, there's a difference here. There's the, and, and I, you can go out there and say, what does inner city uh, bring, drug addiction, gangs, that type of thing. It's, it's much bigger numbers in the, in, the, in the issues that they're dealing with them than what we have here in North Central Washington. What's the best part of your job? What's, that's the, what's the one part of your job as being Sheriff of Chelan County that you'd like the most, that you enjoy <laughs> doing? Uh, I like to say that I can have an impact on the people that work for us, but really um, the thing that I enjoy the most is getting out and connecting with people. I don't get to do that enough. Um, I used to say, okay, here's an example, be at the office and I have a, an evening meeting, but yet I had a morning meeting and I couldn't really adjust my schedule. So I know it's going to be a 12, 14 hour day. And I'm going to go to a community meeting in the evening, city council, whatever it might be. And uh, um, on the way driving there, I'm tired. Maybe or maybe I didn't get dinner, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm kind of grumbling in my mind, this is not where I want to go, this is not what I want to do. I'd rather be home with my family and enjoying some time with them. Inevitably, after the meeting, there's always someone that's going to come up, and I always say that the magic happens one-on-one, -on -one, is people want to come up and connect and talk to you about their concerns or their problems that is important to them, and if you spend a little bit of time with them, connect, get to know them, you learn a little bit more about where we live and, and the people that, that live here, and it's, I, always come, I always come away from that feeling very, very satisfied. That's probably one of the best parts of my job. In fact, you got the job, one of the, one of the probably the biggest reason you ran and won, morale was a significant issue mm -hmm. at the Chelan County Sheriff's Office. So I'll ask you this as we're almost out of time, Brian. How is morale around the old office? I think it's good. I really do think it's good. I think it's better than it's been in a long time. At the same time, we always have challenges. And there's a certain part of law enforcement that people can be very critical. Um, and then what I mean about that is internally, the employees. And so that training and equipment, trying to make a point that they know that we have their best interests in mind, that we are trying to go out there and support them the best we can, and then balancing that between the commissioner's office, the budget, mm -hmm. and, and the service that we give to the public. And so the, it's, it's all encompassing. And I think one of the challenges for culture and morale is, is one is, is how do we talk and present it? Because no matter what it is, my relationship, what we call across the street, this is the commissioner's office, is we always have to, we have to build that up with our city contracts. Um, if there's some issues going on there, we need to hold that here and work together to make sure that our staff is supported and, and, and move that forward. Because that, that is a big piece. If, the gr if grumbling start happening at an administrating level and that trickles down, that has a, it kind of spills over and has a, a real negative effect. And so for us to, to build that up. But once the negative starts, if you're not careful to address it and actually cut it off where it, where it is and bring facts to, you know, it's not factual, it, it's their rumors, it's, it's truly made up, is to, to cut that off. And I think we do a good job with that is trying to address and, and allow people to say, we have an open door policy. If you've got some concerns or there's just questions out there, have you heard this? Come and talk to us and, and, we'll, and we'll give you as much information as we can. Um, and, and that's a big piece of it. But knowing that is that at any administration, it, when things become negative, people start building on that. And so you have to be careful. And I found that out because when I ran against Sheriff Harum and the current administration there that I worked under, there were a lot of rumors. Some were true, some were not. Mm -hmm. And so 
it got to the point where I believe some people didn't trust certain administrators, no matter what the decision was being made. And as I get in there, and I'll say, and I told this, and I had, uh, you know, I admitted this to, to Hiram himself, was that that wasn't that wasn't really fair to him because not every decision that he made was, you know, trying to get after somebody sure. or retaliatory or something yeah. like that. So you learn a lot being in this position. Sheriff, it's good to have you on board. I, I, I'm glad you took some time out of your busy day to come pay us a visit, my friend. Okay. And good luck with the campaign, by the way. And, and you're, I'm leaving here and you're not in handcuffs. You're a good shape. I know, it's good. Can so. you run these plates for me, though? <laughs> run those plates. Uh, everybody have a great Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>